today we're going to start with a little breathing exercise. So if you feel comfortable, just close your eyes and take a deep breath in and hold it for five seconds. And exhale. Do it again. And exhale. One more time. So breathing exercises to me are a great way to kind of re-regulate yourself, especially in moments of stress or you know, you're feeling tense, you have to make a tough decision. It could be good to just take a quick moment and step aside and just breathe for 30 seconds. As a filmmaker, specifically a cinematographer, we are faced with problems that need solving every day. In my opinion, problem solving is one of the top three aspects to the job. Regardless of the problem, uh, a few attributes that I feel that you need to have is to be resilient, you need to be calm, and you need to essentially be stoic. And that kind of brings me to the main topic of what I want to talk about today and how the philosophy of stoicism can directly relate to you as a filmmaker and help you become a better creative and leader. So before we dive into how it relates to filmmaking, let's just provide a little background of what the philosophy of stoicism is. Stoicism is a practical guide to living a better life, focusing on what we can control, accepting what we cannot control. Stoicism is a philosophy of personal ethics informed by its system of logic and views on the natural world, emphasizing rationality, self-control, and resilience. Just by listening to that definition, um, assuming you can kind of directly relate some of those topics to how you as a filmmaker work and act on a daily basis on set. Let's start with the idea of focus and controlling what you can and letting go of things that you cannot. This concept is very important because you're going to experience things that are truly out of your control and things that you cannot predict. And it's important to recognize when those happen and how to deal with them. For example, in filmmaking, one of the elements that I feel is the biggest proponent to uh, a problem that is out of our control is weather. And weather is something that we all think about. We all consciously check our phones to see what the weather is like. We base a lot of our shooting schedule, base our shooting ideas on intended weather, optimized weather, the best uh, preferred weather for the particular scene or uh, mood that we're trying to evoke. Say you're shooting a commercial and you're shooting an outdoor scene and you want it to be bright and sunny and you plan for that. You, you know, go to the scout, you talk to the director, the producer, your key members of the team and tell them that this is what the look we're going for, this is how we're going to accomplish it, this is the equipment that is needed. And you could stop right there and, you know, pray that it's going to be sunny that day. But is that always the case? No. So my advice in terms of prepping and making sure that when it comes to the day of shooting and you run into a scenario where it is raining, it might be cloudy, are you prepared to actually uh, do something about it? Are you prepared to pivot? Are you prepared to uh, change tactics quickly and efficiently? And the only way to do that is by getting ahead of it and prep. So by talking with your crew members and talking with your team about how you're gonna accomplish the look of this specific spot, given optimized weather, you also need to talk about solutions if optimized weather and preferred weather is not an option. What are some things that we can do to kind of pivot the potential story or the look? Uh, maybe it's a new location. Is there something we could find indoors that give us a similar vibe? And by asking these questions, you are preparing everyone. You're kind of prepping everyone to start thinking about the possibilities of pivoting on the day. So when it comes time to actually making that pivot, you aren't stressed about it. You aren't reacting to it, you're actively moving in a direction that is already pre-planned. Uh, another example is technical errors. You know, dealing with technical pieces of equipment, you're obviously going to be faced with issues that arise that are out of your control. It just happens with technology. But the thing about stoicism is understanding that when things happen that are out of your control, it's a matter of how you deal with them and how you respond to them that will directly relate to how you are able to move forward in that process and how people also directly attribute you to solving problems. So when looking at problems that needed to be solved, do you 
want to be the person that's calm, that's poised, that's agile and able to pivot? Or do you want to be the person that reacts and gets frustrated and asks, why me? And why does this have to happen? Who do you want to be? My guess would be you would pick the first person. And not only does that help you, but it helps the team as well, especially if you are in a role of a leadership position, like a cinematographer. By acting in those ways, you are able to better lead and set a better example for your team. So when they have to solve problems, they are less likely to react because they are following the guidance of their leader who is acting in a very stoic manner. Virtue and integrity are vital aspects of not only stoicism, but to be a great leader on set. At a certain point, the role of a cinematographer is less physical and it's more mental. It's more managerial. If you're watching this video and you aren't in that place yet where, you know, you might be doing everything, that's totally okay. It's still important to understand these principles. The role of a cinematographer and filmmaking in general requires a lot of collaboration. And when you have to deal with collaboration, you have to understand the ethical side of things, treating your cast and crew with a ton of respect and creating a work environment that promotes collaboration, it promotes creative ideas, and just creates a freedom of expression that allows people to kind of know that they can come to you with an idea, but also know that their idea might get turned down, but that doesn't mean that their idea was a bad idea, it just might not be right for this specific moment. The other idea in terms of integrity is taking responsibility when things don't go as planned. As a leader, it's very easy to point the finger, especially when somebody doesn't do something right, and that is the reason why maybe you didn't succeed that day, but it takes courage, it takes integrity to look at yourself in the mirror and recognize that me, I'm the leader, I'm the one that's steering the ship. Maybe today I did not do the best of my job, I did not lead effectively in order for us to succeed. And by taking accountability, you're able to recognize what you could do better, and you're able also to communicate with your team about how they could have done things better, but only by the token that you have recognized that you also made mistakes and you are the ones that's taking responsibility for the failure so that next time you can all succeed together. Communication is one of the most important aspects of filmmaking and it's really the only way that anything gets done at all. It's part of creating a healthy and creative collaborative environment. Stoic principles encourage us to be active listeners and be attentive to others. Essentially, active listening means that you are fully engaged in what that person is saying. It's easy to have a conversation with someone, but you're thinking about something else and that person is talking to you that could be something important and meaningful to them, but because you're not engaged, it's going in one ear and out the other. But as a leader and as an effective communicator and collaborator on set, it's important to be engaged and active when listening because they might say something that is actually really important to you that you could then make a decision to move forward with or have to turn down or that might spark another idea. And again, communication is not always easy. When ideas get presented to you as a leader, it's important to recognize that you have to say no sometimes. But saying no in a way that doesn't make them feel like their idea was stupid is a very tough line to find. It's important about just phrasing things and wording your response in a way that allows them to still want to come to you with ideas, makes them feel like they're being a part of the process of being creative and collaborative. I wanna share a practical tip that I think is really important that uh, might help you in your decision making because a lot of the times when someone presents an idea to me, one of the first things I do is just immediately respond. And I've worked on over the past year or so of this one practical piece of advice that I was given that has really helped shape the way that I decide and make decisions on set. It's very simple, but it's pause and reflect. Your pause doesn't have to be any more than five, 10 seconds, but when you're presented with something, take a second, think about it before you respond. Think about all the possibilities in my brain. Think about all the conflicts in my brain. Think about all of the positive things and kind of the snowball effect that this one decision might bring and then respond to that decision. Being present, taking deep breaths and being mindful not only affects your thinking in the way that you are going to respond, but by thinking about how your response is then going to trigger that person's response. So by saying something that might trigger them in a negative way, you are then uh, domino affecting the possible communication further along the line for the rest of the day. So. Think about that when it comes to how you communicate, is how is my response going to trigger this person's response? By incorporating stoic principles, you can develop a mindset that not only enhances your professional capabilities, but also contributes to a better and more fulfilling balanced approach to your craft and your personal life and your relationships. If you wanna learn more about stoicism, I highly recommend checking out Ryan Holiday. He is probably the biggest advocate for the philosophy of stoicism and how um, 
ancient philosophy can kind of relate to your life in a modern world. If you're interested in reading, uh, below in the description I have a couple books that have helped me become a better leader and understand the philosophy of Stoicism. At the end of the day, if you could walk away from this video with one principle, this is what I would hope it would be. Understand that you cannot control everything, but what's important is how you respond to those moments. That's all I got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.